At this lab in Toronto, Ken Welsh is trying to solve an age-old question. Does size matter? To get the answer, he's studying a variety of hummingbirds, looking at whether small ones work as hard as the big. So we're really interested in understanding how much energy, how much power does it take to hover? And how does that change as we scale up in size or look at different hummingbirds? We need to do two different things. We need to measure their metabolic rate. And the way that we chose to do that was to measure uh, what we call respirometry, oxygen consumption rates, carbon dioxide production rates. We use a, a feeder, a syringe in our, in our case, and we put a tube on the front of that syringe. So when the hummingbird learns that its nectar is up at the end of that tube, it will voluntarily fly up and hover and stick its head up in the mask. The mask measures how much oxygen they're sucking in and how much carbon dioxide they're breathing out. Ken's also using high-speed cameras to measure the amount of muscle power the birds generate as they hover. We can position a high-speed camera looking directly down over the bird. We can measure several aspects of how they move their wings. The stroke amplitude, how far the wings go from side to side, the wing beat frequency, and we can use that data to then calculate mechanical power output. It takes a bit for this ruby-throated hummingbird to feed, but eventually it cooperates. That was pretty good. It wasn't a very long feeding, but he was cooperative and kept his head straight. So that doesn't always happen. A number of things can impact whether or not that particular experiment and video uh, works out well. Obviously, the first thing is the hummingbird. Some hummingbirds are a little more nervous performing for the camera than others are. Sometimes they're just in a mood and they don't want to cooperate. If that feeding is less than two and a half seconds or so, we probably don't have enough uh, good data to consider that a good reading. For calculating metabolic rates, this one won't work. But luckily, Ken and his team have been working on this for about six years, collecting data on more than 20 different species of all sizes. What we found is that the cost of hovering differs whether we're talking about the mechanical power output or the metabolic power input, the calories the hummingbird's burning. A larger hummingbird, a 10-gram hummingbird, would produce about four times as much power as a two and a half gram ruby-throated hummingbird in order to hover. But a 10 gram hummingbird isn't consuming four times as much oxygen per minute as a two and a half gram hummingbird. It's consuming something much less than that. Larger hummingbirds are turning a higher proportion of the sugar into the force and shortening of the muscle. Smaller hummingbirds, on the other hand, are more like that less efficient engine. They still consume fuel at high rates, they just pump out a little less power. And that could explain why there aren't any ultra-tiny hummingbirds like the size of bees in nature. It may be that part of the reason that we don't see hummingbirds any smaller than two and a half grams or so is that mechanochemical efficiency is so low, if you go lower than that, that it just doesn't make sense for a species to live that close to the energetic disaster point. So simply, does size matter? Turns out, it really does. The better we can understand how small muscles operate differently from large muscles, I think the better we understand the diversity of life out there in general. Here.